Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Ender.io. Today we're going to be moving on from the basics and going into a little bit more of the industrial machines. So if you saw the first part of my bit-by-bit -bit on Ender.io, then you are familiar with the simple Sterling uh, generator, the simple sag mill, and the simple alloy smelter. Today we're going to be covering the uh, kind of the industrial version of those, or the upgraded versions, uh, namely the Sterling generator, the alloy smelter, and the sag mill. Now these ones here are typically gated uh, by something here, an industrial machine chassis is uh, something that kind of gates you from this. Now the recipe from that requires industrial powder coating, uh, which previously that was, uh, let's see here, as such, which, you know, lapis lazuli powder, coarse powder, organic green dye, and organic black dye. A little bit of a grind to get there, but not too bad. And there has been at least one change since the last time that I did a video, and that has been uh, the addition of some sole attendant powder coating. Now this one here is just organic brown, organic black, and lapis lazuli powder with some of that quartz powder as well. It's, it's not too bad either, but uh, that's more for some other machine types that we're not going to be covering today. Uh, now these ones here, this will make your machine chassis that you are using to make your alloy smelter, sterling generator, and of course your sag mill. Uh, each one has their own recipes. They can recycle the simple versions of them in them, and they may use the Energize bimetal gear. Now previously uh, it was just called, uh, I believe, an iron gear. These are now called uh, bimetal gears of some sort. An infinity one in this case is what the iron gear previously was, uh, and they have since been changed in some of their names. Now in this case with these, the energized bimetal requires an energized alloy ingot, which in an alloy smelter is redstone, gold, and glowstone dust. And by alloy smelter I mean either the simple or the regular one. So once you're able to craft these up, they each have some new added properties and abilities, uh, way better than some of the old ones, but they also share the same exact, uh, you know, previous capabilities of the simple versions. If you start with the Sterling Generator, this being a power generator of sorts using burned fuel, or uh, some kind of fuel to be burned inside of it, you'll note that it has this little slot on the side here that says a capacitor is missing. Insert any capacitor so this machine can work. Now there are three basic types of capacitors. Your basic capacitor, your double layer capacitor, and your octadic capacitor. Now these actually change slightly in their function from the, the previous Minecraft versions did. In this case, I'll put a basic one in here, and it, it says burn rate 100%. Now I could feasibly put in a double or a triple, and it will change up an extra 33%. And that basically means it will go, increase in speed by an extra third. Uh, so it's um, a time reduction, so instead of like one second to smelt something, which, you know, whatever that might be, uh, it would be about two thirds of a second to smelt something, if that helps any. Now going with this, if I come over here with the Sterling Generator, each one has just a bunch of oak wood in there, each one has a basic capacitor, this one has a double layer capacitor, this one has an octadic capacitor. Now these capacitors, recipe for the basic one is going to be Grains of Infinity. Now you can start seeing how this can be uh, needed for multiple Grains of Infinity at this point, because when you get into the double layer, it requires two basics, which of course requ require more Grains of Infinity. If you get into the octadic capacitor, that one requires two double layers which then also require two basic capacitors in their uh, creation, as well as several alloyed metals. Now, if I were to take these, there is nothing different in these except for the fact that they're all uh, redstone uh, available now. You can actually change that up. But if I flick this on, give it a few seconds for things to actually kick in and max out, you can see that we're doing uh, at 80 RF per tick, 100 RF per tick, and 140 RF per tick. Wait, what? Valen, did you just say RF per tick? Isn't it in, in infinity, micro infinities? It's the same thing, people. So, so please stop freaking out about that. There's a lot of people freaking out in the previous comments about the difference between flux and and infinity. It, it's the same. It's just their own naming convention. That's that's it. Everything's the same. So, uh, with this, you can see the difference in these just by changing the capacitors, and that's from the same quantity of stuff. Now, you see this one's burning. It's at 55. It's at 55. This one's at 53, and it, it's going to 33% faster than the standard. So they're they're actually faster with getting the power uh, by the product itself is actually going to just burn up. You're going to waste more fuel with the lower one. So it's good in most cases to upgrade your capacitors. Previously, that would also uh, speed up machines as well as increase their power consumption, as well as allow them some extra greater abilities. And that is still true to a point. 
In this case, it's more that the capacitors are an upgrade. Just by putting in a better capacitor, it actually will, in most cases, make it so that the machine is more efficient. In most cases, not all. Now that we have covered a Stirling generator's simple mechanics using capacitors, of course it has the simple you know, configurations that you had before with the, the simple version of this. You've got your recipes and this now will take lava buckets if you so desire because it is no longer a simple Stirling generator. And it has this extra mode up here, redstone mode active with signal, without signal, never active, always active, etc. So therefore you can have some control over it, put a lever on it, turn it on and off, turn them off, let them burn up the last of the uh, the fuel that they had in there, and then they'll just cool down and you're done. Now, if I move on from that, there are, of course, the alloy smelter and the sag mill. Now, the alloy smelter is actually a little bit different than the simple one in the fact that it is now also a furnace. It will do more than just your basic, um, uh, well, alloys in this case. If I click show recipes, you of course have your regular recipes as you would normally, but if you look here, we also are going to get your standard stuff. And if I spawn in something like, uh, let's get some wood and just bring that in here to turn it into charcoal, doesn't matter any of the slots I put it into, uh, I, I can actually start smelting those up. And it will take three at a time, and it's not going to actually fill them all up because then it's going to try alloying them. You do have an extra option. Of course, you do have your redstone modes, uh, as with the generator I was showing previously, and that is furnace mode, all smelting. Furnace mode, alloys only. Furnace mode, furnace only. So therefore, it, you can just smelt only thing, uh, single items at a time, so you can feed, uh, have a line of several items being fed into it, and it will just, you know, use like a vanilla furnace. You can have it do both in case you ha you want to put in an alloy. If it doesn't smelt up normally, you can put that in there, but you also can use it as a regular furnace. Or you can just have it for alloys only. So therefore, I can put this in here uh, potentially, but if I'm trying to place it, it's not going to let me. So I actually have to turn it to furnace only or all smelting. Now, if I turn that on in the process, the product will stay in here. It's not going to like eject it out of the machine, but it is going to allow you to at least cook that. Now, of course, it has the same configurations, etc. before, and the uh, capacitor increases on this and decreases can change some things up. Now, if you look over here, I have some charcoal, some oak wood. I currently have this stuff going on in here with a basic capacitor. We've got your double layer capacitor, and we have your octadic capacitor. Now, if I turn these on by going back here, I actually have the uh, generators not generating any kind of, whoops, uh, any kind of heat in this case. Let's put that capacitor back up there. Um, I can add in some fuel source and therefore allow it to actually burn things up. So let's do just that. I'll take uh, maybe 16 of these. We'll take 16 in here and we'll take about 16 in here. Now, there is something else that you should know about the capacitors, uh, these being here, is that if you have something like this one here or this one up here, for instance, actually, let's let's click on that. It has a basic capacitor in it. If I take an octadic capacitor in standard uh, survival mode, I right-click, you see it's switched and switched again. So therefore, you can see the different values of energy being stored in there vastly differ. So that is another thing is that it will often upgrade the amount of energy stored in a unit, uh, but you can just right click on it. You don't actually have to open it up, pull this out, put that in, etc. So you can actually just switch them out just by right clicking from the outside. Now if you look in here, I have a bunch of charcoal being made, a bunch of charcoal being made. Actually, it's almost done, and this one is way, it's, it's been done for a while now, while I was talking. So therefore, by adding in the different uh, capacitors, it allows a greater uh, energy availability, as well as it will allow you to basically uh, just smelt things much, much faster. So here's something else that may be of value, is that if you look here at the front on the top left of my screen, you'll see that this has full power. This has about half power, and this has about maybe a third power, uh, or maybe even a quarter. Uh, so I put in the same amount of fuel. I had the same amount of fuel and energy in each of these units, and there are basic capacitors in all of the uh, Sterling generators in the back. It's the front ones that are different. The energy consumption is going to be different. It's going to use a lot less. Uh, of energy in order to actually get this accomplished. So you are going to get things done really fast with your Octodic, but therefore it's going to be a bit more pricey as far as energy consumption. 
Now, if you look over here with the basic one, it still has, like I said, full power, and it is, uh, you know, just really slow. So if you want a kind of an in-between, that's what you've got your double layers for. Now, moving on from the alloy smelter, we also have the sag mill. Now, this one here can get quite complex with its new upgraded abilities that it has. If I click on here, of course, I can put in some kind of capacitor. There we go, I'll just grab one and pop it in there. Regular basic capacitor, you've got your power, the same slots, but you do have this extra slot up here. This is the thing that's important. Now, if you want your most basic and entry level is probably item to put in this slot is going to be something like flint, Minecraft flint. You put it in here, and it will actually, as soon as you put something in to be ground up in the sag mill, it will actually start using this as an extra modifier. Now, if you see, it says here, hold shift. That's right, Minecraft Flint now can have extra tooltips on it. Hold shift, and it says main output, and it's a sag mill grinding ball. This counts as a grinding ball for the sag mill. And it says main output, 120% bonus output, 125%. Power use, 85%. So let me grab um, a piece of cobblestone to better illustrate what the heck this is talking about. Now, if I look here, and I look up, uh, not alloy smelter, but the sag mill, you can see the different outputs by putting a piece of cobblestone in a sag mill. You've got gravel, 70% chance, 30% chance, sand, 10% chance, and of course, flint, 5% chance. And that varies depending upon the different grinding balls that you have in here. But by default, these are your standard ratios, and these are the modifiers for them. And of course, depending upon the balls that you put in here, the grinding balls, it will change potentially the different uh, uh, amount of energy used in order to process them as well. So in this case, main output, 120% chance of getting uh, the, the regular values. So therefore, it's going to be like an extra 20% on top of what you might get. So that 70% might increase by up to another 20%. Your bonus output of stuff like the sand for the uh, cobblestone would increase by 25%. The power use is reduced, so it's actually more fuel efficient in order to put in some flint. So there's no reason not to put in any flint that you might have just laying around that you're not using. Now the problem with this is that they have a hidden stat that I uh, kind of tested a little bit, and that's durability. So a piece of flint isn't going to last forever. For instance, if I put this cobblestone in here and I give this some kind of power, let's just grab a basic capacitor here, which is actually a battery pack of sorts. I'm put it down on the front, and then I'm going to break it just so it has a little bit of power. You can see that the, uh, the, the flint has actually been used up and some of it was used in the process of making this. It didn't actually finish because I, I broke the power before it was able to. There we go, that should be enough. And we got a piece of gravel. So therefore, you know, we, we've got a chance of getting each of those different things. And it did not actually do very much. But it, like I said, it's a chance of getting those things. Not necessarily going to be that good. Now, if you're curious in those stats, obviously there are several different kinds of grinding balls. If you look them up here, just typing in grind for grinding balls, the only one that doesn't show up when you type in grind is going to be flint. But you can always just remember that that's your most basic one. You've got your electrical steel, your energetic alloy, vibrant alloy, redstone alloy, conductive iron, pulsating iron, dark steel, solarium, and end steel, which is brand new to it. Uh, now, the electrical steel... It, the, each one is all just basically going to be a five ingot use of the different materials that I just read off to you. And each one's going to have different abilities. And of course, by crafting up uh, five ingots, you get 24 of the of each of the applicable ones. The only difference is with um, flint, you don't get to craft it up. It just exists. So therefore, any flint you have, you just place in. Now that works really good for a starter, just so that you have better results if you have extra stuff or until you get better materials. You can use this to get more materials as well. Now, if you go with this, I was finding on average, now it does change. If I just use one and then uh, come back later and use one, come back later and use one, etc., it's going to have used up a lot more. It actually works similar to uh, an Industrial Craft 2 style machine, at least in my findings, I could be incorrect in this, uh, that... Um, if you have a stack of something running and it's powered and it runs through the entire thing, it will be more efficient on the durability than it would if you just do one every so often. So therefore, it's best to kind of save up and do a bunch at once. Therefore, you'll uh, prolong the durability of whatever kind of grinding ball option that you use. 
Now, in this case, you have all of your standard stats, your uh, main output uh, percentages, which is the top number along this row. You've got your bonus output, which is the second number along this row. Then you've got your power use, which, you know, it only uses, look at this, 35%. That, that, that's really good. Um, and then, of course, durability loss. And this is on average. I did like a few one-of uses, and then I did like a half a stack as well. So it's on average, I'm getting around, you know, 2.87% of the durability of the item, in this case, flint, is lost per item ground up, like a piece of cobblestone. Now, in this case, you see I'm down to 88%. I only ground up one item. But if you grind up like 32 of them, it's going to last a lot longer. So therefore, that's something, you know, you should keep in mind. Uh, now, if you move on along this, and this is just me kind of like doing a little bit of an average. So it's close to 3%, a little under 1%, about one and a half, about one and a third, one and three quarter, one, less than 1%, less than half percent, you know, and, and so on. Each one doing their own respectively. And they've got some really great values. I mean, if you look in here, you can do, uh, what was it, 175 percent on your basic output. But if you want the bonus output, you know, you've got your like 200 percent, 250 percent crazy stuff. Uh, but it's it's really good for each of these. And I did like testing just with wheat. I tossed in um, like uh, two individual pieces of wheat at a time. You know, I went down the row with one and then I went down the row a second time. And then I tossed in 30 wheat after that, I believe. I might have done like 10 at a time. I don't remember at this point. But you can see that I've got 8 percent left and I was able to get a bunch of uh, byproduct from this, turning it into flour and seeds. You can see that each one varies on the different outputs just by the different grinding balls. Now these are all modifiers on top of your standard sag mill, which will also do its own standard 100% of everything. So, and it of course doesn't have any kind of uh, durability for this because there would be nothing there. So that's pretty much it for the sag mill. Now I am going to cover at least uh, one more item in here, and that's because I think it's very appropriate to the alloy smelter before I go, and that is the impulse hopper. Now if you look here, I've got a vanilla item hopper with 31 of your standard obsidian, coal powder, and iron ingots. And these can be used in an alloy smelter to make dark steel ingots. Uh, which is one of the more common uh, ingots that you would need in Ender IO. So if I were to flick the switch, in this item hopper, it drains out this row first, then this row, then this row, which is actually really slow when you want to make a bunch of dark steel ingots. So how would I go about actually getting those all in at the same time? Three hoppers, right? Well, instead of that, there's another solution. That is the impulse hopper. You can put a ghost of the item of how many you want of each one up here. So if I wanted, uh, let's say, five of these infinity bimetal gears to be inserted into an inventory plus uh, an obsidian, coal powder, and iron ingot all at the same time, then I would do that and then put some inventory of these items in here, which that's how that works. Or you can even just shift click it and it'll automatically go to the slot that you specified already. So that's just one way of doing it. You can just click to uh, get rid of it. The ghost of an item tells you how many are supposed to go in at a time. In this case, one of each of those. So I've got it active without signal. So if I turn this off, you'll see that it starts draining the stack of iron. This one over here, it's actually draining all of them at once. Uh, and the iron, or my bad, the, um, the uh, obsidian is actually going in a little bit slower. It's a little bit titchy at times. I mean, I don't have the, I'm not an expert on this. I have tested a little bit on this. So you can see the uh, obsidian goes in, but it's using up each of them together. Now, in this case, like I said, it's a little bit titchy. I, I do need to uh, report that uh, glitch, but it should work in most situations. That was like a one of. I tested this about five times and it seemed to work just fine. And just now when I'm, I'm recording, things kind of acted a little bit weird. But you can see everything's in all of them at this point. It should insert all three at the same time. And that's just, or even more if you have the desire to use this, it's basically just a vanilla hopper that you can specify where you want it to, uh, you know, drop a group and or one or multiples of items into an inventory at once. And of course you can lock it so that it will actually uh, keep things from, you know, getting out of hand, from, you know, getting messed up and whatnot. 
So I think that's about it for today's Bit by Bit. Yes, there's plenty more that I plan on covering. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to try and keep the videos somewhat shorter uh, and more narrowed down to a specialized group of machines and or items, just so that uh, it's a little bit easier to navigate and less uh, chunky videos. So if you guys enjoyed, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to spread the mischief to others if you think that they'll enjoy this kind of content too. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya. Bye.